Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Uh, this is going to be a follow-up review to the one I posted, I think it was a week or, two, week or so ago. Uh, 100 indispensable classical LPs chosen by a conductor. And that's rather than an audiophile. Many of you know me as the uh, editor and publisher of Audiophilia. Uh, been online since 1997. And having a lot of fun with that and reviewing equipment and music. But this one's going to be slightly different. This is going to be about compact discs. The um, compact disc is having a bit of a renaissance. I think a lot of people uh, kind of got uh, snowed by that PR, perfect music forever, and realized, you know, after about four or five years of listening to CDs, that their LP sounded better, which they do. And so a lot of people got rid of their, their CDs in the last four or five years, and uh, have gone to LPs or streaming. Obviously, that's uh, the big the big deal now. Um, so it's been uh, not slim pickings. The opposite for for people who want to get CDs and build up the CD collection. And so many people now are, are, are trying to fill up their CD collection with with very good, inexpensive secondhand CDs. Of course, they do last forever physically. But uh, what's happened is, it's like everything in, in this world, it gets ruined by greed and avarice and uh, gluttony and people you know, uh, charging now too much for CDs. Remember, remember the 25 cent LP? Then it became the dollar LP, then the $5 LP, now it's the $10 LP. So that's fair enough, capitalism, no problem with that. I'm a good capitalist. But there's a lot of gouging going on. So what I'd like to talk about today is uh, fifth, uh, some boxes. I think I've got about 11 box sets here. And uh, not individual CDs, but box sets of classical CDs that most are available now. And I really believe you should pick them up while you can. Because what happens is they produce these big box sets, usually reissues of stuff. So it's, it's basic pure profit for the record companies, which is fine, no problem. But they go out of print very quickly, and then they, you have to find them on Discogs or Amazon for usually 10 times the price. So, for example, you won't see the Fritz Reiner Chicago Symphony box here, which is now about $2,000 on Amazon, uh, or the Charles Munch Boston Symphony box. I wasn't really into CDs at the time when they came out four or five years ago, and I wish I was because I would have bought them. They're probably a couple hundred bucks. You'll also notice that uh, there are some missing. The, the Ricardo Muti box, which is available, it's very good, but uh, nothing in there that I really was crazy about getting. The other stuff I have mostly on LP. Uh, the Andre Previn box, a big fan of Andre Previn and the LSO, and about, of the, I think it's probably 80 discs in there, probably 30 or 40 I think were worth getting. The others were not really my thing. So there are some omissions that you may have at home and saying, hey, how come the Previn box isn't there? Or the Muti box? Or the, even the Carl Broom box, he has two, the orchestral and the opera, both of which I think are getting and I think I'm going to get. But that's for another time. So let's go into um, my machine just briefly. I'm very blessed to be sponsored for the magazine through by MBL, a German company designed and owned by Jürgen Ries. And you can see on the top there with the shiny gold, that's uh, the, the MBL CD DAC. It retails for about 15,400 US, not cheap. This is a CD player. There's not an SA CD player. Jürgen Ries, the designer, is basically a a genius. Um, he does not like the SACD drives. He said it adds noise. And more and more high-end CD players are becoming just CD players, just red book CD sounds, not the SACD layer. I can play SACDs, SACDs on here, and I'll show you some, and they're wonderful, but I only hear the, S the regular CD layer. But it's such a gloriously musical machine that... Uh, I don't want an SACD player. <laughs> I've heard them, they're wonderful, but this is an exquisite, exceptional CD player. Very musical. So, without further ado, let's delve into these boxes. This is the first one, is a very special box. It's from Esoteric. Esoteric is the Japanese company that makes high-end audio equipment, but they also do remastering of a lot of uh, um, recordings, a lot of Deutsche Grammophones. This is Carl Böhm conducting Mozart with the Berlin Phil. Um, he's got nine symphonies, all the great ones. Well, they're all great, but you know, 39, 40, 41, and 36, 35, 
38, 31, 25, and another great symphony. 29 in A major is a superb symphony. But they are superb recordings, beautifully remastered. Again, I can only hear it. I can only hear the CD layer. It sounds wonderful to me. But that is worth getting. Of course, it's with Esoteric. Uh, it's very hard to find. They sell out very quickly, as the, did this one. And then and you have to look on Amazon or Discogs or anywhere else you can find. And they're usually very expensive. I know that one a copy of the Cortez single CD of the Dvorak 9 on eBay sold for $750. Some people, they're real collector's items. But if you ever see this, especially with that, esoteric, grab it. But that's wonderful. Another esoteric. I didn't have to look for these. These were kindly sent to me by American Sound of Canada in Toronto. Angie Lee, she's a good friend of mine, and she's she gets them, and she's a, um, uh, a dealer. And so she sends me some up once in a while. I'm very, very happy for that. Because this is uh, Franz Bruggen playing Haydn symphonies. 88, 92, 94. That's the Oxford and the Surprise, the Miracle Symphony, the Military Symphony, which receives a knockout performance. The Clock, the Drum Roll, and the London Symphonies. So except for the 88, the, a lot of the named symphonies. And this is the orchestra of the 18th century, conducted by the Dutch flute, uh, Baroque flute player, Franz Bruggen. He's a wonderful conductor, and the orchestra is superb. But it's basically the same orchestra with different names all around Europe. They just go around Europe and record. And this is no different. And it's originated at Philips. Beautifully remastered by Esoteric. But the CD layer itself is the SACD sound sign. But the CD layer itself just sounds remarkably good. That's a fun set, if you can find it. One of the things that was uh, really lacking in my collections, uh, in LPs and CDs, but mainly LPs, was solo piano music. And it was easy to find uh, some of these on, on, on compact disc. And piano sounds very, very good on compact disc, and these are no different. This is a Deutsche Grammophon set, easily available. Uh, it's a um, 2016 release. Arturo Benedetti Michelangeli one of the great piano players in history. Torch gramophone, there we go. And if you get a screenshot, you can see what he did. Mozart, Beethoven, Chopin, Schumann, Schumann, Brahms, Debussy. His Debussy discs are exquisite. Uh, no one even comes close. I think his Debussy is fantastic and they recorded beautifully. He's a very interesting man. Uh, it, it didn't, it was a kind of a technician with the piano and demanded very, very high standards of the piano and the ambience and the hall and the temperature. Canceled as many concerts as he, he, he played. One of those guys. And also uh, was a fine teacher. I think he taught Polini and Martha Argerich. Um, and uh, he was a fighter pilot in the Second World War. Drove a Ferrari given to him by Mr. Ferrari. Uh, but loved in Italy. But he was he's a master, master composer, right? a master a pianist. I think one of his favorite quotes was, if I ever make a mistake in public, I'll shoot myself. Um, well, I'm sure he did. <laughs> he's human. But he, his, his recordings, many of which are live, uh, pretty well flawless. But that's a wonderful box set. There are, a lot, there are other box sets not as well recorded. The George Cranford ones are very well recorded. Everybody needs a set of Beethoven piano sonatas. I have a Arthur... Schnabel on, P on LP, Toshiba Japanese pressing, mono, very, very good. Many people consider the best. There are other great Deutsche Grammophon uh, box sets too, uh, one by Wilhelm Kempf, which is superb. But I love Polini, Maurizio Polini in these. Uh, the playing is absolutely gorgeous, technically commanding, uh, beautifully interpreted, and the sound, for the most part, is very good. Some live, but mostly studio. And Polini at his very, very finest, in his 30s, 40s, and 50s, where he had an amazing command of the piano. You can, I mean, there's a lot of other pianists who've done the, done complete sets. Uh, my friend Bob Silverman has done two. Uh, they're wonderful. And there's also a, a, a gentleman at Oberlin. I, f I forget his name. I reviewed it, the set at Audiophili. It's very, very good. Uh, but this is exceptional. And it's available, and it's not that expensive. I'll bring this one in now. This one is very heavy. This is the granddaddy of all box sets. This is The Ring of the Nibelungen by Wagner. This is the uh, 
Vienna Philharmonic Schulte version, and it is the Esoteric Remix. I'm going to put this down for a second. While I'm talking about it, I can open it up and show you some individual things. It comes with, first of all, all the, all the recordings that look like this. There's the Valkyrie, number one, and the CDs, and the cast. This is, you know, many people consider this the greatest ring. Originally an EMI, so the recording is superb. From uh, the Sofian Saal in Vienna with Schulte. And he was young and hungry, and they called him the Screaming Skull for a reason. <laughs> he had great standards. And the Vienna Philharmonic playing beautifully with the best cast. Now, the one I put on for LP as indispensable was the Carrion, uh, which is my favorite because of the orchestral playing. But if you want a complete ring on, digit, on, um, on CD, you can't get, go better than this. Unfortunately, it's not available and retails for two to five thousand dollars on um, on any website that you can find it. There's not many left, unfortunately. I was very lucky. Again, my friend Angie Lisi, I was very lucky to get this. Included uh, uh, is the John Colshaw producer uh, video, "The Golden Ring," which you can find on on YouTube. It's really good. And then we get three books. Unfortunately, they're all in Japanese. This is Ring Resounding by John Culshaw. Let's see if we can find that. There we go. And it's in Japanese. How's your kanji? Can you read kanji? There you go. I can't. Anyway, so it's a very comprehensive set. And it sounds superb on CD. I keep saying, I want to say SACD but it only plays CD, but it sounds superb, very dramatic, and uh, sung magnificently. So if you can find it, get it. But, you know, <laughs> the price is, you know, ridiculous. On to another one of my favorite pianists that really fulfilled a lot of my repertoire needs, Marie-Joa Perez. She's from uh, Portugal. These are the cl complete recordings on Deutsche Gramophone. What a wonderful lady. And uh, after I reviewed this, she followed me on Twitter, so I hope she gets to see this video. Uh, it has, it's one of those, the way you open it is like this. These big boxes are usually very good. They have, usually have a nice booklet. I'll show you the booklet. There's the booklet. Totally detailed notes and photographs. And there are 38 CDs, limited edition. They're not re they're not remastered. They're just the regular recordings. But they're they're also good from Deutsche, original Deutsche Gramophone. I think some were from some early ones from Arato. They've changed. But anyway, um, let's do some of the the works you're going to get. So you can do a screen grab if you want for that. So we've got her bark, which is superb. Uh, she does Beethoven with her ex. Uh, the uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Augustin Dumay, he's a very fine violinist. Uh, the collaborations on here are wonderful. There's a recital, of, a couple of recitals. But um, Mozart Piano Concertos, you know, if you know her playing, it's, it's a superb. Piano, uh, Chopin, Brahms, and a few Beethovens, lovely. Mozart Piano Sonatas, Fantasias. Highly recommended if you want to see some just wonderful, hear some wonderful piano playing. She's a lovely artist. It's an interesting set from Nonsuch. This is the collected works, all the collected works of John Adams on Nonsuch. I think, don't think he, even some from Berlin Philharmonic Records and a few. Let me just open it up for you and show you what's in it. It's not cheap, especially if you get it uh, from Nonsuch and with import fees and everything. It's, it's to be a bit crazy, it's kind of silly, really. So a huge box of, of CDs. I mean, everything, we're talking everything, multiples of everything. This is very good. Some wonderful essays written by him and friends, including two recordings of Harmony Lara, which I think is the greatest orchestral work of the last 40 years. Two wonderful performances, one by the San Francisco Symphony, disc number one. Let's see if we can get that. What's amazing about this disc is the piece is incredibly difficult to play. Even more difficult to conduct. I use it as, as practice. The first five minutes of that piece is, is mind-bogglingly difficult to conduct. 
And uh, the San Francisco Symphony, it was basically turn the light on, read it through, practice it, record it. And in, I think it was a couple of four-hour sessions conducted by John Adams, who's a very good conductor, by the way, and a Harvard-trained musician and classical clarinetist, but a great composer, as many of you know. But everything is included in here, including two harmony layers. The second one with him conducting the Berlin Phil about 30 years later is exceptional, the best one around. But this is operas, Nixon in China, Dr. Atomic, really the death of Klinghoffer, all the chamber music, concertos. It's really amazing. Okay, on to two superb orchestral box sets. And the reason I purchased these, considering I have a lot of stuff on vinyl, is because there are, in this one, there are 55 CDs, and it's the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. There it is, beautiful DG, still available. Get it while you can. The complete record is on George Gramphone. Uh, the 55 CDs, not one dud among them, and I'm not kidding. It's the consistency of this group, no conductor, maybe that's the reason, uh, no conductor is quite staggering. And concertos and symphonies and uh, every piece you can imagine for string for, for uh, chamber orchestra, ad winds, and sometimes a little larger, like you've got, um, uh, and then mental piano concertos and the symphony, Italian symphony. The Haydn symphonies in this are just spectacular. Very famous. The Schoenberg works. So is the Stravinsky's. The Stravinsky Pulcinella that's famous. Uh, all the Mozart concertos played by the solos of the orchestra, which are very, very good. But if you get a chance to get that, it's not that expensive. It's available. I'll show you what it looks like. It's one of those very easy flip-top boxes. And in there... And there's a wonderful booklet, as usual, fully detailed. That's a, that's a keeper, if you can get it. My second box set of orchestral music is equally special. This is Zubin Mader with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, the complete deck of recordings. This is another one with, I'm not sure how many CDs are in here. Let's have a look and see if we can find it. I'll have to take out the booklet. 38 CDs. And you can see here... And they look, and the booklet, which looks like this. What's amazing about this is the consistency of the recording and the playing. Zubin Mehta was really kind of young and hungry. He left the Montreal Symphony and took over L.A. when he was quite young. And he really, over, I think it was 16 or 18 years, built them into a real powerhouse, mainly because the recordings at UCLA's Royce Hall, they kind of fiddled around and got the hall sounding beautiful. So the recordings are exceptional. The playing is very, very fine. Some of them are just, you know, The Planets, Brooklyn 8, Arcana by Varez, and the other pieces are pretty well definitive. But the recordings are superb. Alpen Symphony, held in Leben. Symphony, his Symphonia Domestica is spectacular. But the reason I got that is because the, of the orchestral playing. And uh, if you want to have an Osos Barak's Arthistra or a, a Planets, the very, very best. So with Meda, there's 30, 38 recordings here. Um, with the Previn, I think there's like 50 or 60. 30 of them, in my opinion, you may think otherwise, in my opinion, are not worth having. Thir about 30 are. They're superb. But it's just too much dead wood in there for me. For this one, there's not one bit of dead wood. It's just superb. That is, it's available, buy it. And finally, to our last two box sets, uh, I, I realized I was really wanting in string quartets. And uh, string quartets, this is the Alban Berg string quartet, one of the two or three greatest quartets of all time, in my opinion. This one has 62 CDs, as DVDs as well, um, from Warner Classics. But originally, you know, Teldec and EMI, wonderful recordings. Most of them studio, some and towards the end of their careers, they decided to go live, kill two birds with one stone. And the live ones, are, they're so perfect f technically and musically that they, the, the, for example, his, their original Beethoven recordings, uh, which sold a million copies, by the way, which is a pretty staggering number for, for a classical recording in the uh, 70s and 80s. Their later Beethoven set, I think it was like mid 80s to very early 90s, is superb also, just beautiful. A little different, it's a little older, a little more mature. But uh, as far as the recording is concerned, you can go with either, they're wonderful. But that set is, is pretty well, if you like string quartets. And as an audiophile reviewer, 
of course you need string quartets because they give you so much of what's important and essential in ensemble playing and emotion and uh, connection. And of course, the music is, you know, when you listen to Debussy or Ravel or the Beethoven quartets or the Berg quartets or the Bartok quartets, you're listening to some of the greatest music ever written. That's a wonderful box. Available, CT2 CDs, that's probably all you're going to need. But there is one more and my final box for you. Another string quartet box that I couldn't resist. This is the new complete recordings on George Gramphone. Very recently released, still available. About $150 worth every single penny. This is a 55 CD limited edition. You can see it's one of those great ones from George Gramphone that just opens up. And I'll show you the booklet. There's the booklet. And much like the Album Bear Quartet has everything you're ever going to need, including some of the best recordings I've ever heard of the Debussy and Ravel String Quartets, the Bartok Quartets, the Berg. They do the Shostakovich Quartets. They may be your cup of tea. They're not mine. They're just superb. The Beethoven is fantastic. It started off quite poorly with the first CD. It was done in 1986, I think. They were very young guys out of Juilliard, very keen as mustard. And they kind of overdid it on the recording a little bit on the down bows and Look how great we are. But by the second CD, all the way through to the 55th, uh, they're pretty well flawless. Their musicianship is exquisite. They do things with their instruments that um, other quartets can't do. Just uh, just different timbres and ta uh, the tones. Uh, both violinists switch between first and second violins. They're that good. But this is a... F and they've been together a long time. They're just... F they're doing their... Their farewell tour this year. The cellist there, David Finkel, he left in 2013, replaced by another fine cellist, English, I think his name is Hugh Watkins, and uh, very fine. But you cannot go wrong. If you only have money for one set, a one string quartet set, either the Albenberg or the Emerson, some days I prefer the Emerson, some days I prefer the Albenberg, you're not going to go wrong. There is, of course, the Quartet Italiano, which is also a very good one, but it's not, I don't think it's available anymore. It's probably very expensive. But both the, uh, the Berg and the Emerson are both available. Get them while you can. Anyway, that's it for the CDs, uh, as far as uh, box sets are concerned. Hope you guys are all well. And uh, getting back into the CDs, it's a pretty inexpensive way, comparatively. Uh, you know, streaming, you can get into streaming quite easily. But when you get into the, the top tier of streaming with... Uh, the machines, the, the, the DACs and the, the streamers and the, the network switches and the Ethernet cables, you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get, uh, you know, comparatively good rec uh, sound compared to CDs. But I'm blessed with this CD player because it just sounds exquisite. Is it vinyl? No, it's not vinyl. Uh, it's very, very fine. And, it, and many, many times, if I'm in the mood, sometimes I prefer CDs. If I've got the equivalent on vinyl, I'll usually play that. But the CDs box sets that I've recommended are very good. If you can get the Reiner box set on RCA or the Schalmunch box set, uh, go for it. But they're hard to find. Those esoterics are also very difficult to find. But the rest, I think, are pretty easy. And they're not too bad. There is a brand new Claudio Abado box on Deutsche Gramophone. His complete everything from Decker and Deutsche Gramophone. But it's priced ridiculously, like 1,100 euros. So they're getting, you know, they're getting a little bit out of hand. So get these while you can. Anyway, hope you're all well and you've enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you in the next video.